and welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me is Court Winsett. Court Winsett. <laughs> and Cameron Spann. Over here just hanging out in the kitchen. How y'all doing? In mm. the kitchen? Well, this episode is going to be about the rise of pickleball. Mm. I said pickleball, not pickler. I guess El Pickler is talking about pickleball. So, mm. okay, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to do all the pickler references and yeah, pickles. And... I think once is enough. I think okay. we should create a sport, pickler ball. Pickler. <laughs> pickler ball. Okay, so this is the rise of pickleball. Um, I'm sure you've heard it everywhere. I know I hear it all over social media. Oh, indeed. And about, you know, once a week, a client's talking about, oh, I'm playing pickleball. Mm-hmm. And so fascinated about it. And finally, we decided to get a celebrity guest to talk to us about this sport. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what our guest says. But I have heard that this is financially, it's relatively low barriers to entry. You know, there's not a whole lot of outlay of cash that you have to spend to to get into this. So it can be a good way for you to get involved uh, pretty easily and uh, not have to spend a whole lot of money. So you're you're kind of helping your health and staying yeah. cheapy. Yeah. This hobby is a lot cheaper than, um, say, following Taylor Swift around the world. I yeah. So. And it has a similar trajectory to disc golf, the boom of COVID and all that mm-hmm. good stuff. So I'm looking forward to diving into that with our guest. Yep. Okay. Before we get into that, we do have a fun celebrities who play pickleball. Yeah. Who so- are the celebrities that have dived, divin, dove, that dove <laughs> into this sport? <laughs> Okay, let's start with this. And then, of course, we're going to end this list with our special guest celebrity. So Selena Gomez, uh, she discovered pickleball several years ago and has been an active player ever since. The former Disney star has even invested in a pickleball business to help the sport grow. Okay, next on the list is Michael Phelps. Apparently, he went from the swimming pool to the pickleball court. (laughs) Uh, So pickleball fever has hit him, and he enjoys a game as an alternative sport to swimming. And he uh, he apparently likes to play with other celebrities for a bit of a fun challenge. So uh, I love it how uh, these athletes are going out and finding themselves some celebrities to hang out with. You know, you got Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift. Yeah. uh, Michael Phelps is just out there playing pickleball (laughs) with celebrities. It's great. Love it. Number three on our celebrity list would be Drew Brees of NFL and Saints fame. Brees describes himself as an avid pickleball player, fan, and student of the game. This must be true because he has even created a pickleball festival to benefit his foundation, the Brees Dream Foundation. Mm. Wow. Oh, now we're starting to, we're branching away from athletics and musicians to presidential aspects. We've got Jenna Bush on here. Her entire family is involved in this. And she reveals that she loves to play on vacation. Okay. Technically, she is celebrity slash news. That's true. You know, yeah. She, but talk show she, personality. Yeah. yeah she's and a, so when it says entire family, is that mommy and dad or is it her, her immediate? her and her husband and her kids and stuff. I mean, okay. you know, daddy could get out there and play too. I, I could see Laura Bush out there yeah. getting it. Uh, but you know, you never hear anything about Barbara, uh, the, the sister, not Barbara, the elder, but yeah. Barbara, her, Jenna's sister. I don't, you don't ever hear anything about her. Mm-hmm. I wonder she's probably she enjoying her quiet life. Maybe she plays pickleball. Okay, well, next on the list is uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, who is also a huge fan. There's even a rumor that he won't do any filming early in the day until after he's had a chance to play. So that's, um, a, that's a diva move for Leo. Well, I mean, you know, George Clooney asks to uh, have a basketball court on every movie set that he films on. So, uh, you know, maybe Leo can just have a uh, have a pickleball court on there. Yeah. Speaking of George Clooney, next on the list is George and Amal Clooney. The Cloonies love playing pickleball and are such fans that they built a pickleball court in their backyard. I wonder if he switched from basketball courts he to may pickleball courts. He's getting a little older. Interesting. It could be a nice little pivot. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, and then we've got Bill Gates on this list that uh, he's been playing for five decades. So he obviously was before the big boom that's happened. His father was friends with pickleball creator and the Gates family was one of the first to play the game. Of course they were. That makes so much sense. When I was Googling it, it was founded in the 50s in Washington State. Mm-hmm. Where was Microsoft based? Right. Seattle. Yeah. 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 That yeah. makes sense. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Okay. The last on the list, and I'm going to add a little bonus one because I think there's one that we missed, but uh, Kevin Love, um, he loves <laughs> pickleball. <laughs> he believes in the sport so much that he actually bought a major league pickleball team. Who knew that there were such a Had thing? Had no idea. He, he bought it with his friend LeBron James. Now, I will say this I had heard that there was another kind of celebrity slash professional sports 
guy who was into pickleball, and that's Tom Brady. And I had heard that he was either investing in a league or investing in a team. And so I wonder if he's out there as well playing some pickleball in his retirement. So, you know, pickleball apparently fun among among the, the retirees, and he's certainly retired. I mean, <laughs> granted, he's, you know, he's in, he's what, in his 40s? Or did he play professional football well into his 50s? I that's don't a know. great question. He's 46 years old. No. Oh. All right. Well, there you go. There's our list. Okay, so we just went through that list of celebrities who play pickleball, but we are so honored today to have our own celebrity that is going to talk to us about pickleball. We have, are you ready for it? Ready. I feel like Nicole would be like, that's a Taylor reference. Are you ready for it? (laughs) We have David Silberman. He is going to talk to us about pickleball. He is a longtime friend and client of Pickler Wealth Advisors. He lived in Germantown, which is uh, the town over from where our office is located, for about 28 years and now lives in Frederick, Maryland since 2015 after retiring to get closer to his children. So, David, we are honored to have you on Bullcast with us to hear all things about pickleball. But first, can you kind of tell us a little bit about you and um, why you are our celebrity today? Thank you, Katie. Um, I've been playing pickleball since 2015. When we moved to Frederick, uh, we did not know anybody here at all. And I saw in our development, we had a a one-page list of activities and one of them was pickleball. I had heard about it, but really didn't know anything about it. And um, so I called the number, I I spoke to this gentleman, I said, I'd be interested in learning. And he got me on our courts that same day. And we were hitting back and forth. And I've been playing racquetball um, for quite a number of years. So it it kind of was easy for me to do that. And uh, that got me started. So I began to play with a, a couple of people, there were only 25 people in our area that were playing at that particular time. Uh, I played at our local recreation center three times a week. I began to play so much that they asked me uh, to become ambassador for the USA Pickleball. That's, that's the national governing body for the sport, kind of like U.S. tennis or USA golf. Um, and that was back in 2017. So I've been ambassador now for uh, Frederick County, where we live, for the last seven years. Um, I'm one of 13 ambassadors in the state of Maryland and one of 2,000 around the U.S. Wow. Interestingly <laughs> enough, there's four, there's four ambassadors um, in the Memphis area in Shelby County. I, I do not know them, but none of those people existed when we moved seven years ago. <laughs> so it's just an indication of how fast the sport is growing. I've been... Um, a member of the Maryland 2017 Senior Olympic team in pickleball. Um, We represented Maryland in a national tournament. Whoa. I've won um, several tournaments in the area. I teach pickleball twice a week as part of of our county parks and rec. Um, I also organize a a pickleball tournament for Alzheimer's that I've been doing for seven years. And I'm a member of a steering committee that was created by our local parks and rec to create a 21st century um, indoor sports an education center, something that we really need. And this will include, among other things, 32 indoor pickleball courts. So the demand for the sport um, has been so great that uh, the number of people playing has been greater than the number of venues that have been built over the area. That's just an indication of how popular it is. When um, I first started playing, as I mentioned, we had 25 people playing here. Now we have over 1,500 people registered, and from the latest information I've, I've seen, there's over 30 million people in the U.S. that have been playing. That's up from about 5 million about five or six years ago. Now, David, what do you um, attribute the uh, explosion in popularity to? Um, it seems like four years ago, I had never even heard of this, and two years ago, mm-hmm. people were starting pro (laughs) franchises, and it just seems like it's gone crazy. What would you say is the cause of that? There's a couple of things. Um, My philosophy in pickleball, and it it seems like this is kind of universal, it's three-pronged. Number one, it is a lot of fun. And people are able to to get on the courts and play literally the same day. They have to learn the rules and the strategies and so on, but just hitting the ball back and forth over the the net um, is, is a lot of fun for people. Number two is... They get exercise, and this was especially true during um, the pandemic. The CDC had put pickleball down as one of the the sports that they recommend 
that you could play during the pandemic because you could play outside, still maintain social distance. But number three, and, and this is just as important as the other aspects, the social aspect of the game. People have gravitated and made friends. They participate in happy hours and Christmas parties and all kinds of, of things. So when we moved here, we did not know anybody. Um, we were new to the area. And now I've made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of friends because of pickleball. So those three things, having fun, exercise, and making new friends are the social aspect have, have been really a, a major influence in terms of, of getting this, this sport to the popularity that, that it is. Yeah, that's a good point, David. Uh, it's when COVID hit is when I really started hearing about pickleball. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened with disc golf, which is uh, what I play. You know, people got outdoors and they learned to love this sport. Pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America. Uh, David, I have a couple questions as an outsider looking in. Uh, when I see okay. pl people playing pickleball, it looks like a perfect blend of tennis and ping pong. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's actually a combination of, of tennis a little bit of ping pong, a little bit of badminton. Mm. The court itself is about half the size of a tennis court. And you might think it looks like it looks like a, a mini tennis court because it has a net, it has lines and so on. But there's some significant differences between pickleball and tennis. Number one, the paddle itself. And, and please, you can't call it a racket. It is not a racket. <laughs> it is a paddle. So if you do that, you, that's a no-no. Uh, the paddle looks kind of like the size of a racquetball racket, but it, it does not have strings. It does not have holes. And the ball is a wiffle ball. So it literally looks like a wiffle ball. It's a plastic ball. It, it, it has holes in it. The scoring is very, very different than, than tennis. Um, in tennis, you have a lot of love in tennis. Mm -hmm. in, in tennis, there ain't no love in pickleball. <laughs> well, not exactly. There's, there's love among the people but not in the scoring. The, the games are to 11 points. You only get a point on your serve, but you do serve cross court like you do in tennis. But unlike tennis, where you serve overhand, you must serve underhand. You must make contact on the serve below your waist. So uh, those are a couple of, of differences. There's one other major difference. There's a line that's uh, seven feet from the, the net on either side of the court. That area is called the kitchen. In tennis, you can go right up to the net and hit the ball on the fly, but in pickleball, you cannot go in the kitchen and hit the ball, at least on the fly. You can if it bounces, but you cannot go right up to the net and hit the ball on a fly. So those are a couple of significant differences um, between the sport, but it does have some um, parts of tennis and badminton and ping pong. Okay, so I purposely did not Google anything about pickleball before this uh, session with you because I really wanted to learn. So as someone who does not really know a lot at all about pickleball, how many people would play and is it considered a match? Is it a game? What What is the lingo for that? But if I was to show up, how many people are participating during the game or match? Well, you can play either doubles or singles. I will tell you, um, in my years, I have played singles. I will no longer do that. It's a little bit too strenuous for someone my age. Um, but the majority of the people play doubles. Okay. And it, it'll look a little bit like you watch a doubles match um, playing tennis. The game is, is a match. As I said, the, the games are to 11 points. You only get a, a, a point on your serve. But one, another significant difference, though, is in tennis – when you serve, and if, if you serve into the net or you serve and it goes out, you get a second serve. In pickleball, you do not. You only get one, one opportunity to serve. And if the ball goes out, you lose your serve, and then, then your partner serves. So um, those are kind of the elementary parts of the game, but there, there is a lot of strategy involved. Interestingly enough, the, the number one pickleball players in the world – the gentleman, his name is Ben Johns. He happens to be from Maryland, coincidentally, and he's 24 years old, and he is phenomenal. And the number one woman in the world, her name is Annalie Waters. She's only 17 years old. She dominates the sport like no, no other athlete literally today that's playing in any sport. Um, and I, I humorously say I want to grow up and be Annalie Waters. <laughs> She's that good. Well, so, I mean, and you said you were part of the Senior Olympics team. So is pickleball in the Olympics now? 
the actual Olympics? The actual Olympics? No, no. Um, the, U, the, the USA Pickleball has actually petitioned the U.S. Olympic Committee, hopefully to make it as, as a sport, but not an official sport, but as a sport in the, um, the L.A. Olympics in 2028. Right now, that's still pending. It has not been approved. But um, if not, then hopefully it can be a sport in the 2032 Olympics, which will take place in Brisbane in Australia. Oh, wow. Um, one of the, the arguments that they have to make it an Olympic sport, it's now played in at least 60 countries around the world. We just came back from a, a trip from Australia and New Zealand, and, and I was surprised to learn that Australia had um, at least 15,000 people that were playing pickleball in, in that country. And New Zealand, a smaller country, had 5,000 people. Hmm. So the sport has grown um, not only nationally but internationally. And hopefully one day it will become an Olympic sport. You had mentioned earlier that you're basically playing with a wiffle ball. Does the wiffle ball get any bounce or is, does it just kind of die once it hits the court? Good question. Um, we play both indoors and outdoors. So the court is the same indoors and outdoors, but obviously when you're playing um, outdoors, you, you're dealing with elements that you don't have in the indoors. The outdoor court is, is like a tennis court, so it's, it's kind of that, that rough, mm -hmm. cementy type feeling. Uh, when the ball has some speed to it, it will definitely bounce and, and take off. Um, if you hit it back softly because the ball is not spongy like a tennis ball, if the ball comes back over the, the net, it will die. And I encourage people when I teach them, when the ball is coming back over the net, that you have to go right up to the ball to hit it. Indoors, most of the, the, the times you're playing on a, a multi-activity type court, like a basketball court that has lines for pickleball. It's a wood gym. The ball there really, really does take off. Mm. And um, so that creates some, some additional pressure in terms of, of um, hitting the ball. The balls themselves, while they look the same indoor and outdoor ball, the indoor ball has only um, 24 holes and they tend to be a little bit bigger. The outdoor ball has 40 holes and they're smaller. So that comes into play because of the, of the wind. Uh, wind can be a, a significant aspect in, in terms of the strategy of the game. That is fascinating. I would like to briefly talk about the fundraising aspect of this sport. In the intro, we had mentioned that you organize a pickleball for Alzheimer's tournament. Can you talk about that and also your history with knowing loved ones with Alzheimer's? Unfortunately, um, my mother passed away almost 10 years ago now from Alzheimer's, and, and we saw her deteriorate um, and really tragically for five years. Um, she went downhill. When we moved to Frederick and I got involved in the community with, with pickleball and I decided that the way I wanted to give back, I contacted the, the local Alzheimer's Association and I said that because of my love of pickleball and because of the, the support that I've gotten in the community, I wanted to create this tournament and they were, they were all for it. And our local Parks and Rec were able to donate one of their facilities for two straight weekends that I do this tournament in November. Um, I've been doing it now for seven years. Um, it's over Saturday and Sunday, for, like I said, for, for two straight weekends. I have 96 people. I limit it to 96 people um, that sign up to register. The, all the games are doubles, and there's, there's women's doubles, men's doubles, mixed doubles, and it's also based on skill level. And over that, those past six years, I'm, I'm about to do my seventh year this year, We've raised over $30,000 for the local Alzheimer's Association. Our team is called Team Pickleball. So the money goes to the, the, the Team Pickleball for the Alzheimer's Association. Um, and that was a way for me to, to give back to um, Alzheimer's and, and also get people involved, as well as to create some um, interest and support for, for Alzheimer's from the pickleball community. So from a fundraising perspective, are the majority of your funds coming from advertisers, sponsors, uh, entry fees? What is creating the money for you? Yeah, strictly entry fees. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll, I will have people donate above, over and above that as well. Do you traditionally have to uh, pay some sort of 
court fee or something if you want to play just, you know, normally play pickleball? Do, or do the public parks have courts that people can just go to? Or what is that aspect of it? Uh, well, it depends. There are, are several places, a lot of places around the country that are private facilities. There's actually a, a place in, in um, Wichita, Kansas called Chicken and Pickle. Um, <laughs> so they have a combination of, of a restaurant and pickleball courts um, combined, which, which is, just sounds like a lot of fun. I've not had the opportunity yet to play on that. But then there's also public facilities like Parks and Rec and so on where you can play indoors uh, and they charge nominal fees. I know here it, it might be $2 or $3, so it's, it's not a lot. Uh, and then there are a lot of outdoor parks um, where you can play for free. We have one facility here that just opened in the last year. It has six exclusive pickleball courts and it's, it's free to play on. Uh, they have lights and people are on the courts um, right up until 10 o'clock when the lights go off. So it depends. Um, Again, the, the number of facilities has not kept up with the demand, and that has really been an issue. I, I know in um, the Memphis area, there's at least a half a dozen facilities that have pickleball, because I, I was looking that up. And some of them are, are free outdoors, and some of them, again, um, you have to pay for it. Being the financial podcast, I want to ask this question. Um, we obviously are encouraging our listeners, like, have those hobbies, be a part of that. So you kind of answer the question on how much does it cost to play at the court. But, for instance, I was talking with court this weekend about the fact that when, uh, you know, our David Pickler, he um, was talking about racquetball. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try racquetball. And of course, then I had to go get the shoes and the racket and the <laughs> balls. And so I know that there are some people that can go like full into it before they even actually try something. They're like, I got to get all this stuff. But maybe tell us the bare minimum of what you have to have to play pickleball. And then maybe some of the elaborate, more elite things that you could potentially have if you really are dedicated to the sport. You know, I've, I've heard a lot of people question whether pickleball will be like racquetball. It'll be kind of a fad uh -huh. that'll come in and come out. Um, but there's some significant differences and why I think pickleball is here to stay. Number one, in, in racquetball, it's played indoors and you have to have a specific facility that has the ability to create a racquetball court. Um, in pickleball, you can play indoors and outdoors. And you can use a facility that has um, like a basketball court and you can put lines down and, and go ahead and play. But number two, the amount of people that have been exposed to pickleball, especially um, seniors, has been just overwhelming. And they have been coming out where maybe in the past they would have maybe played golf or bowling or something like that. They have forsaken those things and, and gone in right to play pickleball. I, I think pickleball, like I said before, was the social aspect has been really, really significant where that had never developed in racquetball. In terms of what you need, it, it's very, very simple. All you need is, is that paddle, which you can find in, in um, a Walmart or online, Dick Sporting Goods and so on. And you can spend anywhere from $30 up to several hundred dollars for a paddle. You, you don't have to spend that much money for an introductory paddle, but as long as you get a paddle that's made out of um, graphite or a composite material, that's fine. And then you need a, a wiffle ball um, and, and a place to play. Obviously, you, you want some um, good athletic shoes to play in. And then just put your T-shirt and shorts on and, and you're set to go. But once you learn the rules, uh, you're, you, we, we have people that when we do clinics, they learn the rules that particular day and they're, they're playing that day. So it's, it's an easy sport to, to learn. And once you're there and, and get a group to play and you can play as, as often as you like. Yeah, this isn't so much a question as just a, what I've been thinking throughout this episode. Like I mentioned earlier, David, I play disc golf and you, you obviously play pickleball. And there are a lot of key similarities, not so much how the game is played, but disc golf was founded in the 70s, pickleball in the 60s. They both had a COVID boom. They are both, I would consider, a subculture with a supportive fan base. They're both inexpensive and they're both relatively easy to pick up. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. I, I contest 
noticed that <laughs> just golf is not easy. Oh, man. <laughs> man. Hey, David, how about you take me pickleballing and I'll take you disc golfing? Actually, believe it or not, um, during the pandemic, um, I bought the three disc set and we have a, um, a local park here that has disc golf. So I went out and played. I uh, played about a dozen times. Oh, wow. But um, I, I decided it was taking away my pickleball time. So yeah, yeah, I hear I you. I stopped playing disc golf. And, I hear you. And, uh, but I would, I would love to be able to teach you guys pickleball and do a clinic and so on. I just have to travel that 1,000 miles from where we live in Maryland to Memphis <laughs> and make, to do that. As I was going to say, we'll come visit you. But I, I, what I love about all of this is that, as you kind of pointed out, it's – that so many benefits of this, that you've got that community, you've got the health and fitness aspect of it. And then another thing that we talk about a lot on this podcast is kind of have the, that balance where this could be an escape where this is time you set aside that you aren't having to worry about, you know, kids or job or things like that. And you can really just kind of escape, be in your culture have your pickleball time, but you're hitting several different buckets of mental health, physical health, and then community engagement. Right. Um, My schedule now revolves around pickleball. (laughs) Um, So I put it on my calendar when I'm playing pickleball. And and I actually, I play six days a week. I'm going to be playing this afternoon. Pickleball comes first. So even when we scheduled for you to talk to me, I had to make sure that that my pickleball did not interfere with that because it was already on my calendar for today. Mm. Pickleball so, is life. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that has been. And it, that's why it's been so good, especially for people that have retired and seniors, um, because it gets them to get outside and, and get off the couch and be active and meet people and talk and socialize, which um, they might not have had the opportunity to do so if, if the sport didn't exist. Mm. So, again, one of the, the reasons why it has become so popular. This has been a fascinating episode. And before we close, I have one more question on my end, David. When I was Googling pickleball, the certain uh, phrase kept coming up, the nasty Nelson. Can you tell me what the nasty Nelson is? Um, When you serve, as I said, like in tennis, you have to serve cross court. But uh, the other team on the other side of the net, the person that's directly opposite you is already up at the kitchen line. And again, this is very technical, so mm-hmm. it, it'd be more easily to explain if you're on the court. So if you're serving and you're serving cross court, but instead you decide if you serve and you hit that person that's directly opposite you on the other side, mm-hmm. you get the point. Oh. That person has to duck away. It does not happen very often. Matter of fact, I don't think it's ever happened when I play, at least not intentionally. It's interesting. It says the nasty Nelson is generally seen as disrespectful, especially in tournaments. Huh? It definitely is. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's something that, you know, not good sportsmanship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I would not encourage it. <laughs> well, this has been very informative. I think there's been a lot of great information about uh, pickleball. Thank you, David, so much for sharing uh, your passion behind this and so many of the benefits. And then Really, this is a great example, whether you're, you know, going into retirement or, you know, you're just getting your career started. This is something to really think about, whether it's actually pickleball or disc golf or something. It's just kind of finding that healthy outlet. And so I am very fascinated after this episode and definitely going to look into it. And uh, maybe a bull cast team will go and try our hand at pickleball. I would love it. Mm. Let me know. I, I'd be happy to fly over and give you a, uh, a clinic. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> No, oh, there's the closing bell. Ladies and gentlemen, you've made it to the end of yet another episode of the Bullcast Podcast. If you liked what you heard and you'd like to hear more, please feel free to go to your favorite subscription service and sign up to have our podcast delivered directly to you every single Thursday at noon. If you'd like to find out more about Cameron, Katie, Court, or Nicole, please go to our website. That's bullcastpodcast.com. We've got uh, bios up there, and we've also got a place where you can comment on anything you've heard us say or suggest a topic you'd like to hear us say more about. If you like pictures, we do have an Instagram handle that is at Bullcast Podcast. And we also have a Twitter handle that is at Bullcast Podcast as well. Our Facebook page is Bullcast The Podcast. So you can check that out too. And finally, 
We mentioned that we work for a guy named David Pickler at a place called Pickler Wealth Advisors. And if you would like to find out more about Pickler Wealth Advisors, what we could potentially do for you, find out about our amazing team and find out about our boss, David Pickler, please feel free to go to that website. That website is picklerwealthadvisors.com. That's advisors with an O. Not an E. Ladies and gentlemen, we have given you everything you need to know to go out, buy a paddle, not a racket, (laughs) play some pickleball, and have some fun. So for now, I'm Court. I'm Katie. I'm Kim. And we're done. (laughs) 